Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes and untold TV stories you probably wouldn't have known from the people who lived them. Today is our final segment with the late, great Ernest Borgnine, a conversation we had seven years before he passed. He was in his late 80s when we did this shoot, and he was friendly and enthusiastic and still ready to take on the world. In this last installment, Ernest Borgnine shares what it's like to be famous all over the world. He talks about his most famous and beloved guest spot as the Man in the Mountain on Little House in the Prairie. He also questions his life choice as an actor. And years before it was written, Ernest Borgnine reveals what he was planning to call his autobiography, which I recommend you go out and get right now. You go all over the world and people recognize you. All over the world. Uh, I once stood, believe it or not, at the corner of Sunset and Vine when they had a Dupars over there. And I came out of Dupars and I looked up and down the street and I said to myself, I wonder if anybody in this world will ever recognize me for the work I do in motion pictures. And I'm very happy to say I can go anywhere in this world and people will recognize me. It's amazing, isn't it? And it's a great joy to me because, like my mother said to me, you know, if you can make one person happy in a span of a day, you've achieved a great deal. And so I think with my motion pictures and my television shows and everything else, if I've made at least one person happy somewhere along the line, that's all, that's all there is in life. That's what it's all about. You made me happy today, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Didn't you have a story, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm, if I'm misremembering, when we were on the uh, ship, did you tell a story about somebody in Italy recognizing you on a street corner or something like that? Did they what? Somebody from Italy recognizing you on a street corner. It was like some... Oh, yeah. You know, the people start speaking to you. Oh, sure. Oh, it, oh, they come on up, you know, and then they want an autograph and they want to shake hands and airplanes. They, old men come up, you know. This is, this is what's astounding. You know, usually they're very suave and, you know, they carry on. They come up and, may I shake your hand? Of course, you know. <laughs> it's... It's the most beautiful thing in the world. How did veterans react? People don't want to be bothered, but I think that, you know, if you, if you can, uh, I mean, these are the people that buy the tickets. And if you can't be nice to the people that buy your tickets, uh, what's the sense of making pictures? <laughs> exactly right. You've got to be nice to them. If they're nice enough to come over and ask you, certainly you're nice enough to say, of course. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. I've seen people walk away. And that they wouldn't have anything to do with the people, you know. And, and, uh, and of course, uh, a lot of them complain about, about um, having their picture taken. Well, what's wrong with having your picture taken? My goodness, that you're in that business. And uh, that's what you live for, to have your picture taken. To, have, to sign your name, to shake hands, to, oh yes, of course. And if you can't do that, if you put up your nose and walk away from them, uh, who are you hurting? Only yourself. I'm not trying to be, believe me, I'm not the greatest in the world, but I feel this, that sometimes I think it's a challenge in the sense that People do and people don't, and I think they should. I think they should because those are the people that buy our tickets, and, uh, and those are the ones that keep you going. And I love my public. I really do, wherever they are. <laughs> You've done a lot of um, really great, um, not, just, not just your shows, but guest shots on other shows. Are there any shows that stand? I have a list of stuff, but are there any that, that stand out to you of shows? Ask about it. Okay. How about, um, oh, God, The Simpsons. The Simpsons? The which? The Simpsons. Oh, The Simpsons. Well, I said, if Johnny Carson can do it, so can I. You know? And I went on, and I had a ball. I had a ball. And uh, the best part of it is I'm still getting, uh, getting residuals. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget, uh, uh, I went in and made a picture called The Devil's Reign. Uh, not very many people saw it, but I played the devil. 
with the horns and the whole bit, and it took about six, seven hours to put on the makeup. And it was quite a makeup, I'll tell you. And it's called The Devil's Reign, in case you're interested out there. And I want to tell you, uh, I scared myself. <laughs> but I said, you know, if, if, if uh, Frederick March and Spencer Tracy can make uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, certainly I can play the devil, you know. And I did, and it was, it was a marvelous challenge. And I, had, and I had a ball doing it because it was really something. It was about this man, you know, who you take to be an everyday person, and yet he was the devil. And at the end, uh, when you think that they've got him because they they burned down the church that he was worshiping in and everything else, and they saw him die, and they're dancing, you know, and they're having a ball, and suddenly the girl is gone, and this fellow says, you know, and he's dancing with the devil. I said, you didn't think you'd get away from me, did you? <laughs> Pow! You know, <laughs> right between the horns. It's great. It's just marvelous. I had a ball making it. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> really? Earlier you were talking about Little House on the Prairie, and I just wanted to ask you to, to, to follow up on just one little thing on that so that we can sort of complete that story. Could you tell me this the kind of little... Reader's Digest plot version of what, what what was that story about? Do you remember? It was a story of uh, 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 what, what's her name? Um, Melissa Gilbert. Yeah, Melissa Gilbert. Uh, her father and mother had a little baby, and naturally, uh, the baby lasted only for a couple of days and then died. And she thought that she was instrumental in having that baby die, and so she ran away. And she followed this stream all the way up and then finally came to this mountain. And this, she met up with this man, this uh, man in the mountain, and who took care of her. And, and they found a dove, you know, who had been hurt and everything else, and they mothered it, and everything was fine. In the meantime, uh, Michael Landon and his buddy are, are looking for her, you know, and they're going crazy. And in the meantime, I had her fashion a sort of a, uh, of a cross, and while, while we were washing up at the brook, accidentally this cross fell into the, into the brook, you know, and accidentally on purpose, who knows how the good Lord works, right? And the thing floated down and Michael saw it. Well, uh, he followed up the, the, the river and he saw this smoke rising and he called her and she said, yes, yes, and she came running. And uh, finally, when uh, they got up to the top of the mountain, she says, and I want you to meet this man of the mountain who helped me. And there was no man of the mountain. And that's why it's one of the most favorite uh, films that he ever made. And it's still being shown. And uh, again, it showed the other side of me, enough from being a killer. <laughs> People were expecting you to take her. That's it. <laughs> what a wonderful story. I it is a wonderful story. Uh, and that's why I thought it was a little gushy, you know, when I first started. And I said, but who do I, I don't know, you know. I'd, you have to see these things work out. And then when it works out, you say, gee, I should have done a dozen of these, you know. When you read, the, what, how did you feel when you read the script? I mean, what convinced you to do them? I was against it because I felt, no, no, this is too gushy. I, I just didn't feel right about it, but it worked out. What made you take the part? They begged me to, and of course Michael, you know, said, "Hey, come on, Ed, I want you." I said, "Fine, let's go." So we went up, and um, and it was it was marvelous. We shot it up up north in uh, in northern uh, northern California, and one day while we were horsing around after lunch. I noticed a flag in a, in a, in a what you call, um, uh, an antique shop, a flag that had flown at Mare Island Navy Yard. And that's where I used to go with my ship, or we used to go with my ship, uh, to get it refitted and uh, re we worked on, you know? And I said, boy, look at that. There's a flag from my, from my old Navy Yard, you know, that I used to go to. At the end of, this, at the, end of the show, Michael presented me with that flag, and I've still got it. You bet. Really nice. Huge flag.
And I fly it every now and then on my flagpole. Yeah. Wow. It brings back a lot of wonderful memories. And my house is full of memories. It really is. Because I like, wherever I go, I like to gather little things, you know. And um, uh, you'd be surprised at, at, at what, what you can, you know, you look on a floor somewhere and you see, oh, I remember that. And, and <laughs> oh, that one. I remember that. <laughs> But it's all there, you know. Have you done your book yet? Have you written your book yet? I'm working on it now. Yeah. Uh, I shan't tell you the title because it, I don't think it'd be good on, on this program. But <laughs> <laughs> Although I did say son of a so-and-so, didn't I? I think I said son of a so-and-so. Well, I'll tell you the title. And this is a, an actual true story. Uh, I was walking up. I was uh, in in my early time in show business. I was walking up 10th Avenue in New York after having finished at the Bada Theater of Virginia and everything else. And it was one of those times when there was no jobs and it could only be seen once a month on television because they didn't want to show your face too much. You know, they'd, people get tired of looking at the same face. Can you imagine what kind of thinking? Anyway. And I'm saying to myself, you stupid fool. I said, why? Why did you ever get into this business? You know, you're, you're, you're going from pillar to post here, and you're not accomplishing a thing, you know? And suddenly I smelled hot chestnuts. Somebody in, in late fall is selling chestnuts, a vendor up there in the corner. And it reminded me of my mother when she used to cut the chestnuts and put them in a, in my mouth is so... <laughs> I uh, put them on a pan, you know, and put them on the stove and let them roast, and the whole house would be permeated with this wonderful smell. And I walked up closer, not to buy any, because I didn't even have money to buy a chestnut, but just to smell. And I saw a sign on this vendor's cart that became, believe it or not, the philosophy of my life and the title of my book. And it read, I don't want to set the world on fire, I just want to keep my nuts warm. And that's going to be my title. <laughs> <laughs> you think it'll sell? I, yeah. <laughs> but, but books, some bookstores may have to put it on the back of the, the bookstore, but I think, yeah, I think it'll sell. I think we've, have we covered everything? Just about. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. For it's me. A pleasure. <laughs> the great Ernest Borgnine. I'm David Levin. Till next time, please leave me your comments. Let me know what you think of the show. I read every comment. If you can't watch the video version, you can listen to our podcast, which we are starting soon. And if you're listening to our podcast, you can watch us on YouTube at Pop Goes the Culture TV. Please subscribe. Please follow Pop Goes the Culture on Twitter at Pop Go Culture. Facebook or email me at popgoestheculturetv at gmail.com. And please subscribe to our Patreon campaign. Just a buck or two from you can help me keep doing these, those shows. And for three bucks, you get a chance to be on our live sister show, Ask Them Yourself. So give it a shot. I'm David Levin. Thanks for watching. More to come very soon.